put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. If the video is simply too long for you, I did record a shorter version and the link is in the description box. A Million Ways to Die in the West, Movie Review. Seth MacFarlane stars as a cowardly sheep farmer and after he loses his girlfriend, Amanda Seyfried, from basically being, being too cowardly for a gunfight, he is pretty much giving up. So when Anna, played by Charlie's Throne, comes into town and tries to encourage him, give him some, well, courage, he does actually start believing in himself some. But on the horizon is Clinch Leatherwood, played by Liam Neeson the deadliest gunman in, you know, I don't remember if they say on the entire frontier or just of the general area, but yeah. And though Anna has been training Seth MacFarlane for a gunfight, there's still some, some degree of difference between winning a gunfight and actually going up against. I'm just going to go with Liam. You may have noticed that I'm going with just the, the actors' names. I honestly don't really remember the names, but I think that's more my inability to remember new names than, you know, relatively, relative inability, than the, the actual names they, they chose for the characters. This one is not at all as good as Ted, which, I mean, I didn't know quite what to expect of that one, but turned out to be a great comedy with a real heart. This one, it's almost a good comedy. Now, basically, one of the, the big problems with this, and others have pointed this out, is that it really should have been edited down some. It's 110 minutes, and there are easily entire bits that could have been trimmed, possibly even some that, could, that could have been removed entirely. It doesn't feel like that many jokes were edited out. It feels like the, the you know, yeah, that, that one was... It just it feels like everything was left in. Now the I would say the the humor is at its best when it's about the the time period and the general setting. The the jokes about the, the titular you know million ways to die in the West. Just the. The, the jokes can be summed up as it was a sucky time to live back then. And yeah, a lot of these jokes are genuinely really funny. Some have said that almost nothing of this, I, I think I read some reviewers say that it was like one fourth of every joke or gag. I would say it's about two thirds, which does still leave a bit without, yeah, there's, there, there are entire segments that don't really have jokes, like everything that has to do with the bad guys, almost, excuse me, almost entirely joke free, I, I don't really know, Liam Neeson can be funny, I, I'm not sure he's gotten to prove it all that often, but 
he can be really, really funny. And, I mean, I think I mostly know from, like, some some of his stuff in, in Dark Man, just, yeah, when, when he gets to play to it. And, and here, you know, he's basically parodying the the typical badass role that he does a lot of these days, and it looks like he came with the intent to be funny. He's just not given any material to be funny. And yeah, when, whenever the movie goes for being tense or sometimes even dramatic or like basically if it's not primarily going for being funny, if, if it's a scene that's supposed to be kind of, you know, pulling on our heartstrings for the, the romance story or something that's supposed to be scary, yeah, those scenes don't have a lot of jokes and, yeah, they, they really aren't, those scenes are just not funny, pretty much. And you do kind of feel like you just want the movie to get going to the next funny scene. And really, it didn't need to be that way because if you. Some, some of the best comedies actually do infuse these more. You know, these, these scenes that aren't inherently and primarily funny with, with, with humor. Now, one thing that I was really surprised by was just how conventional the structure is. I mean, you, you're gonna, I would say you're gonna see every plot development coming, but you already saw them coming before you, you know, before you even consider getting a theater ticket, if, if you are going to do so. There's no surprising plot developments here. Part of it is that it really, the, the structure is partially like that of a romantic comedy of maybe like 20 years ago. I mean, as I've already mentioned, Seth loses his girlfriend Amanda Seyfried to Neil Patrick Harris. And basically, he's the douche and Seth is trying to like compete with him. And it really doesn't do anything particularly different there. You, you have all the scenes that you're like hoping they'll either skip or make just you know unforgettably hilarious. You have the, you know, he shows up drunk at her place and tries to talk her into it and makes a fool of himself. He shows up at the, you know, at, at the new guy's work and tries to, you know, and and the other guy rubs his face in just how big it's it's the old thing of, you know, she left him for someone more successful, some someone richer. They they even go right there and then again don't really make a joke out of it. It's a, a lot of it feels placeholder, like they didn't really they didn't get around to make, putting a joke in there, so they just have them state this is what this is supposed to be. You know, there's like like for example the the she left him for the richer guy thing. They literally have the scene where Neil Neil says to her, Let's go let's go buy you something. And she says, Something expensive? And he says, Yes, something expensive. And it's like that's not really funny the way they, and, and it could be, but it isn't. Now, this does genuinely look like a Western, and that's, again, something others have pointed out. And it's, yeah, it feels like a Western. It, it does feel kind of like they just put these more, you know, more recent comedy characters and running gags and such 
into a Western. It, it really does feel like, you know, when, when they have one of the, you know, jokes where, I'm not sure it qualifies as meta, but where Seth literally says, where we live, this particular point in time and part of America is insanely dangerous. You know, that feels like they just, you know, they just took a step into an actual Western to deliver these jokes. Now, some of the material also, it goes too far in trying to be offensive and disgusting, and it's, it feels like it knows it's not quite funny. I'm, I'm talking specifically about these jokes. I'm, the overall movie is funny, but when it goes for offensive humor, it often goes so far as if to say, I know I'm not actually funny, but you're going to remember me just by how disgusting this is. And it's also just some of the jokes, again, are so conventional when, I mean, I mean, I haven't watched very much Family Guy, but I've watched plenty of American Dad and, as I said earlier, Ted. Seth MacFarlane doesn't really, you know, he isn't someone who just goes for the conventional and, and such. He tries to surprise and challenge. And, yeah, a lot of this just feels too, too predictable. There, you know, you have the the comeuppance of the douche. You have some diarrhea joke. It, yeah, it's it just it's not that compelling. And really, again, if if this had just been more edited, it would it would be a lot better. Now, the this is also as, again, as others have pointed out. There's, uh, it's all about these, you know, especially Seth, this kind of pathetic male who just, you know, has to, excuse me, has to win the affection of, of a girl, and the women in this kind of are just defined by their relation, relationships to the men, and I don't, it's, it's not purely like romantic relationships, but yeah, they, they kind of are there to support men in one way or another. And yeah, there, there are way too many scenes in this of just Seth being kind of pathetic. There's, there's a lot of those awkward scenes where something is you know, he's, he's making a fool of himself in public, or something is expected and then doesn't go that way and such. And this is something that, again, it can be good, just there's way too much of it in this. There are also a number of jokes that go on after the punchline has arrived, and yeah. Now... It's been said that the the talent here doesn't really get a lot to do. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. There's there are some really funny people here, and though they do get to be funny, some they they certainly don't get. I mean, Rabisi is funny here as he always is. I don't I can't think of a single time I've seen him in some kind of comedic role where he wasn't funny, but he was so much better in Ted. Now, there are some cameos in this, and some of them are quite fun. Some of them just feel like someone famous was supposed to be in this particular bit, and that was kind of it. There's, there's literally one where 
that didn't have to be a cameo at all, and certainly it could have been just anybody. I mean, basically, it's like, it's the role of an extra, but it was just given to someone who's recognizable, and yeah, they, they just, they should have done much more with it. Those who've already seen the movie might be able to tell who I'm talking about. I suppose this more or less covers it. The, the whole romance thing isn't that compelling. It's, it's too archetypal. You, yeah, you, you know where it's going. And these characters are not that clearly like developed and such that you really care that deeply. I mean, it's not it's not a drag to sit through the the, the romance stuff, or maybe the stuff involving Seafree, but yeah, it's just it's not that compelling. There are a number of running gags and such that really didn't that don't particularly deliver that either should have had some iterations cut or possibly been dropped altogether. There's this running thing of like one sheep who's supposedly like kind of retarded or something like that. The movie's words, not mine. And yeah, it just it isn't that funny and there isn't really any overall payoff to it. Now, I think that might more or less cover it. Yes. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.